guys, welcome back to Nintendo Minute. We are very excited to be not in the studio today and at PAX West. Live at PAX. Live at PAX West with a bunch of really amazing people. Uh, <laughs> perfect. Right on cue, I love it. And we're here to talk about Metroid Samus Returns with special guest Audrey from the Nintendo Treehouse. Welcome. <laughs> perfect. So as Mr. Sakamoto mentioned in the video, he was really kind and sent over some um, pieces of concept art that we haven't shown before, uh, just for this panel, just for you guys um, to get you excited for the game. So here is our first piece. It's a Queen Metroid. Yeah. And as Sakamoto-san has said, uh, you can see she has about a billion eyes. Roughly, a billion eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and those are actually to convey that she's kind of guarding over all of the Metroids that she's birthed into the world. And she also has a lot of spikes and a lot of teeth, so she's pretty formidable. So there's another comment they shared that I liked of, as you get from different types of Metroid, you can see sort of a common through line of them getting bigger and more fearsome, but they share a lot of the same traits. Um, and one that he called out was the sort of triple jaw that it has that opens up mm -hmm. all these different ways, and that's actually my preferred way to eat a hot dog myself, because <laughs> yeah. I just open just it up open that way and just jaws. cram it right in. <laughs> um, but we do have new enemies added to the game as yeah. well. This is actually really different than sort of traditional enemies in Metroid games, so I'm pretty excited to show you guys this. I'm really excited about the one. This yeah. is the Digger Knot. Yeah. And uh, the concept behind this one was actually he's an ancient Chozo mining robot. So the thought was that he was used to actually dig into the center of the planet when they were building their colony. And um, you know, this really is a, is a great change of pace in the game. You're fighting a lot of Metroids, you're exploring, and then out of nowhere, boom, now you're fighting this. Yeah. So it yeah. really does uh, make that feel special and different, and you'll fight this enemy a couple different times in the game. It scares the crap out it's you. true, for anyone who's a fan of classic Metroid, which probably a few in here, I'm guessing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 exactly. Good. This ex has that feel of old school Metroid just to a T, the mystery and the isolation, mm -hmm. yeah. so you are in for a treat if that's your jam. Yeah. Um, so here's one of Samus in her gravity suit, mm -hmm. which is really cool, and this is a, a more of a kind of a blueprint or schematic of that showing both the gravity suit and of, of course the, um, the more fall. So it's very interesting to see sort of the, the, uh, the suit in this detail. Yeah, they really wanted to convey a sense of lightness and uh, mm -hmm. power here. And I think they really, they really came yeah. across. And also those sort of glowing blue elements indicating that it's keeping her very cool yes. as she descends into the hotter parts of the planet. I think they even called out that there's some elements that look like wings to indicate mm -hmm. that she could almost fly away, which Float I thought away. is really cool yeah. because that's, that's kind of a theme that you see visually in, in like mythology or in other parts of pop culture of just mm -hmm. this sense of lightness being indicated you know, visually on the body of a character. Yeah. And then the last piece we have here is an illustration of the Chozo base. And of course, it's so creepy. Basically, yeah. the floor is like covered with those scary poisonous plants and they shared was you can you know they felt like the metroids would go to the hotter parts of the planet so you can see kind of the glowing red elements and they've really kind of colonized this more and more so those are the two you know main color schemes that you have here is that redness indicating the heat and then the green just indicating it being infested with metroids yeah. mm -hmm. so before uh, this panel we actually did something really fun on the nintendo twitter account we asked you guys to submit your fan art for Metroid. And of course, our fans are so talented. There's always, whenever we do kind of a call like this, we we'll always get just the most incredible submissions from folks that have um, really amazing artistic skills. We, we try to draw Metroids on our, on our notes today. And don't talk yeah. about that. <laughs> Sorry. They're oh, yeah. fair to middling. <laughs> We're not gonna show you, but they're gorgeous. It's not, yeah. it's, yeah. Oh, it's bad. Okay. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yes. One of those. Fan art. Museum quality. <laughs> Museum quality. Um, but for reals, let's take a look at some really good fan art. <laughs> so we picked six pieces to show you guys, but we got tons of submissions. Um, here's our first one, which is mm. so cool. More gravity suit. Yeah. You know? This is by at Varia Zim. Mm -hmm. I really like just that this is giving you a sense of the vastness of the universe. You know, not to get all metaphysical here, but you know, this uh, Samus's adventure is happening on one planet at one time, but what else is out there? Yeah. What does it mean? Yeah. 
We'll discuss this at a later time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the philosophical yeah. nature of On this the next piece of Nintendo. Nintendo. We'll discuss with my therapist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one here. I love I love the contrast between yeah. the two. Change of pace. Change of pace. Like yeah. the dig or not, this is a change of pace. Yeah, it's such a different <laughs> art style. Such an interesting take on both Sam is with like the big, big head the and, head. and the chibi head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> At Gosha Doyle did that one. Yeah. Gosha Dole, sorry. Next. This one's just groovy. Yeah, yeah this is so cool. <laughs> it's like it's sort of inspired by some Eastern artwork. Mm -hmm. You know, you almost think, you know, things look like dragons yeah. in the background. <laughs> it looks really dreamy to me mm -hmm. as yeah. well. Like it has sort of like this dream state, maybe because of the colors, but. I think this is what a Metroid dream looks like. Yeah. Oh. A, I don't know a that. fevered <laughs> Metroid dream and not canon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the next one's your favorite, I think. There's a really cool Explain backstory why. to this one, which is this is actually made up of different food items. Yeah. So you can see cauliflower. I think the talons are, they look like crab, crab claws legs. or yeah. something. Lobster claws. Maybe some sort of a jello mold like involved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those combination of items sound really gross, but it looks cool in like Metroid art. I wouldn't eat it, but I'd look at it. Yeah. yeah. And then Hot Rod McCool Guy. Yeah, Maybe Hot Rod best, McCool the, Guy. The best name, <laughs> best name. ever. Yes. I mean. <laughs> Lives up to it, clearly, <laughs> with his artistic prowess. <laughs> this one I was, like, staring at for a long time because it, it didn't look like it was actually, like, a piece you could even make. I don't know. I was like, this is, like, I think this is, like, a, a 3D render of some render. sort. Yeah, yeah. Very talented. All right. And our last piece is from Lee Kovac. Friend of the show, Lee. She's not only an amazing artist, but she's an amazing cosplayer yeah. as well. So. Yeah, as, as with her costume, she really represents all the fine details of the characters uh, mm -hmm. in the artwork here, which yeah. is what makes it stand out so much. Yeah, yeah, very cool. All right. Um, Audrey is going to give us a demo right in here. In case you're unaware, we're here on Planet SR388. And, uh, Samus wants to kill some Metroids, so we're not going to keep the lady waiting for too long. This is a reimagining of Metroid 2 from the Game Boy. How many people here have played that? Oh, yes. wow. It's like yeah, maybe half or so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how many people played that and made their own maps on grid paper? Grid paper, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's how you do it. Yeah, I, I played a bit of Metroid 2 uh, on the flight over here just yeah. to re refresh myself. Yeah. And it, you know, I, I think it was doing a lot of great things on Game Boy at the time. You know, had a big world, the character sprites were really big. But yeah, there was no map. I'm like, how did I get through this game? And you have a terrible sense of direction. I so do. It's not good no, for you. No, it's not good. There is a very good map in this game, and you can put markers yes, there down, is. and yeah, you and can use the amiibo to help you if you get lost. And there's an ability to help you, which is I think it's, it, it bodes well for you. For real. Somehow, even though this has been upgraded so much, it really captures the feeling of the original really brings it to life with a lot of enhancements. Like we saw when I first started playing uh, the Chozo seal. Yeah. And that's a really cool visual uh, representation of what happens when you actually kill the Metroids and collect mm -hmm. their DNA. So right. right here, we're in area one. So this is still pretty early. We're not we're not trying to spoil anyone on anything, but I uh, just want to give you a little, little, taste, a little taste before the game comes I'm very out. impressed that you've been talking and also executing some pretty amazing <laughs> yeah. spider, spider ball action. We'll see how well that timing is on going point. on. Come Metroid time. It's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now that we saw, uh, activating the Chozo seal earlier actually lowered the poison goo, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. allowed me to explore a new area, and I actually found an elevator to take me somewhere completely new. Oh, you are a jerk. <laughs> Not you guys. You guys are great. <laughs> So I actually have a, a crazy comparison that I sort of came up with in my head for Metroid games. And that is, this game, Metroid games are kind of like Picross, in that you have the information you know, that's available at you at the time, you have the power-ups that you have, and you're kind of chipping away at this map. Mm -hmm. And at a certain point, you, know, you get more information in Picross, you get more power-ups here, you keep chipping away, and by the time it's done, you really feel like you have a sense of ownership over it, of, you know, I got through this and I did it my way. Just okay. like Frank Sinatra. I see a lot of people shaking their head out there. <laughs> You're going Made sense to me. Just a second ago, we passed up another Chozo seal, but I don't actually have enough uh, dead Metroid DNA left to open that one up, so yeah. I, I have an idea of how we can fix that problem. Probably though. maybe find some Metroids. Uh, so now we're going to use Scan Pulse, and this is a new ability added to the game. It's an Aeon ability. And when I activate it, I can actually see breakable parts in the wall. And using it here shows me that there aren't actually any nearby, so... That missile tank right there, I'm going to have to go back for it. <laughs> and that's the great thing, too, is that you can play it old school and just bomb everything, or yeah. you can use Aeon and save yourself some time. 
So here's a save station. And while I have this great squishy mesh right here, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and scan it. And if I scan this Metroid, it'll show if there's a, met uh, a Metroid in the area and it'll actually show it on the map. So now I know if I wanna kill a Metroid, head in that mm -hmm. direction. Yeah, it's, it's nice that it do. gives you like a little hint but doesn't tell you exactly how to get there either. Yeah. So you kind of have to still explore and um, kind of find your way over to it. Yeah, I love the way, you know, with Metroid games when you are collecting these power-ups, the world just feels like it's opening up to you. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. the ability for you to um, go back and explore different areas is really like, it feels, it's like very satisfying to me. You know? Like really a Picross puzzle almost. No. Let uh, it go, kid. Not Let really. it go. No one likes this comparison. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking, speaking of which. Yeah, speaking of backtracking, we actually have this teleport station now, and this lets you go back to areas that you've already been to. We're already right where we want to be, but mm -hmm. this is invaluable when you're trying to go back to places you couldn't access before or look for missile tanks you might have missed. So, so there's another missile tank. And I can't let these guys go. I, I have mean, to track them down. So I'm going to use scan pulse again. And it looks like next to this groovy purple haze there that there's breakable blocks. But I can't get there just yet. Oh, hi, Metroid Husk. That's you. Bothersome. Steaming Metroid oh, Husk you. also smells bad. I don't think that smells good And I'm at very all. close to the Metroid, but this, this is breakable. So I'm, I'm just going to have to follow it. Just have to see what happens. Yeah, you do get that very <laughs> ominous rapid beeping. Yes. Oh, the missile tank from There's before. the missile tank from earlier. Oh, good. Feels so good. I know, you're like, it's like bugging you still from yep. before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, if you love exploring every square inch of a world, oh, you're going to love this game. Yeah. Yeah. Nicely <laughs> executed. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, my Metroid sensor is going nuts. So me thinks there's a Metroid through this door. Yeah, probably. Probably. There he is. Hi, friend. Big friend. Nope, no. all right, it's not gonna go down that way. <laughs> so, as you can see, this is actually an evolved alpha Metroid. Things a little bit more of a jerk than usual. Oh, but I'm gonna melee counter nice. and bomb him into oblivion. That I really, oh, oh no! Jerk. <laughs> How dare he? But as you can see, even just one hit, he does an insane amount of damage. Yeah. And if those uh, little le electric balls he drops hit you, you are not in, in a good place. Trouble. Yeah. And it's cool during um, you know each of the Metroid fights. It's a little bit different. There's different environments that you're fighting in. There you go. You make Got pretty quick work of that. All the, the Metroids are different too. There's ones that are you know lightning based and all different. Yeah. So. So you it keeps it really interesting. Game every yes, time you, find you one. don't know what to expect when when you encounter one. And and boom, all kinds of breakable walls in here. They didn't build for this place to last. And these flowers here, I just think they're so cool. Much like Samus, they're beautiful but deadly. Yes, so pretty much. <laughs> take care of them. <laughs> Now this guy though, he looks super friendly. I'm gonna yeah. trust him. If you ever see a glowing ball on an alien planet, just go for it. Yeah, it'll probably. That's be our fine. advice to you. <laughs> that was my favorite animation in the game. I love that, that like, animation. Little, yeah, yeah, it's so cool. The tongue shoots the you back. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yes, it's like it's doing the wave. I love it. <laughs> uh, it's just like doing the wave. And now we've got the lightning armor. This is another new Aeon ability added to this game, and this is really cool because. While it's activated, it'll actually uh, take damage from your Aeon Gauge instead of from your health. So there are some areas where this is absolutely invaluable. And I'm about to show you And you, you also don't get stunned when you're being attacked at all. Mm -hmm. You can just go right through it. Right. And it also looks really cool. It looks cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and as you can see, my uh, Aeon Gauge isn't going down, so it only goes down as you take damage, which means you can use it really, really strategically. Mm -hmm. And here we are near that awesome purple haze. And I remember there being like a breakable uh, blocks here. So, oh gosh, I'm gonna very, very quickly break them. Oh, now you see your AN gauge going down. Get in the water, which yeah. counteracts the, the fog. So, there's that missile tank. Nice. Yes. It's like being attacked by a swarm of bees. Just go straight to water. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right. it's a good thing it feels like it's painful, though. You know? It looks like it, really it painful. It looks like it's like yeah. burning or something. Oh, uh, goodness. No, run! <laughs> okay. We're okay. <laughs> Poor Sam is such a trooper. <laughs> Fine. 
Oh yeah, the melee counter when you have the lightning armor on it is looks awesome. so cool. It looks really cool. And since I just went to where I got the Aeon upgrade, I actually was able to refill my Aeon there, which mm -hmm. is going to be really handy for the dumb thing I'm about to do. Oh no. <laughs> so I can actually, I can run through this with the lightning armor, but I kind of like to be tricksy. Like go sneak on it. by there. Nice. I can save it for a rainy day. <laughs> oh here, yes. Here are those flowers, and you know, I'm just going for it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That sound Run. when it's in there. It's like, scratch, scratch, scratch. Well, don't just stand so there. Painful. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're having a party. It's great. Oh. Counting down. <laughs> and we got a missile tank. See? It was worth it. So worth it. Absolutely All that pain. Worth it. Worth it. <laughs> and so in the interest of not spoiling too much, I'm not going to... Uh, venture any farther past this, but All that right. should give you a little... For those of you who watch Nintendo Minute videos, you might know that we do sometimes um, episodes uh, with comment time. <laughs> yeah, so we um, we looked at all your comments from from the, the Metro video we did with Sam, and um, here's what you guys have to say about that. Sam's cool. Have Audrey as a guest next. Well, okay. It's almost <laughs> like we read these comments. Yeah, you know, we listen. Sam is cool, and here I am. <laughs> Red light when an enemy is in your sights really makes Sam's feel like a bounty hunter. So, when you do the sort of manual aiming, they really nail the cool factor. Every one of those poses is so stylish yeah, and so is. sort of iconic, and some of them look a little uncomfortable, but I don't care because they look so neat. Uh, as you saw during my dance party, it's, <laughs> it's how I play that Your game. Dangerous flower dance party? Very, very dangerous. Yes. yes. The game is where you can't really rush through it. You see how speedrunners see the that truth. Kind. You really can't rush through it. You yeah, have to be. Yeah, I got a sense of that with our players that came up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's you got to explore. You got to kind of figure out like the environment around you and stuff. And that's really the great thing about old school Metroid games yeah. is that you have to be really thoughtful, really cunning about mm -hmm. how you go about exploring this planet because it's full of secrets. It's also full of danger. And if yeah. you're not careful. You will die so many kinds of horrible deaths. <laughs> so much death. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm curious to see what the speedrunning community might do with the game, though, once it's out and once they really like sort of get master used it. To it now. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a great experience to make your own maps when you're younger. Um, I remember mine and still got, I still have some. So we were just talking about the, the team mapping. grid yeah. paper. Yeah. I've right. seen a few people talking about going back to sort of older games that didn't have maps and doing them in really like special ways. So like Jeremy Parrish of Retronauts is somebody I've been seeing. He's been doing maps of you know older Metroid games, older Metal Gear games, yeah. and in a very artisanal way, and something that I would want to hang up in my game room, but I can't yeah. you know I can't do it myself. Yeah. Uh, so maybe he can just send me one of those when he's done. I'd yeah. love that. Jeremy, are you yeah. listening to this? We hope so. Send us maps, <laughs> please. All right, our last comment here is a really long one. But so does anybody else think the melee counter looks? kind of abusable. And so this is an interesting uh, comment. The melee counter uh, requires very specific timing mm -hmm. for each enemy. So it's not like just a free for all kill every enemy button. Yeah. Like uh, I, I've melee countered a few times in my life, so mm -hmm. I'm used to the timing, but yeah. it takes a lot of practice. I'll also point to what Sakamoto-san said during E3 is that the game was actually uh, rebalanced for all of these new abilities. So mm -hmm. it's not like they just shoved these in the old gameplay balance, it's actually mm -hmm. been reworked so that it's still just as difficult and challenging yeah. as you would want a Metroid game to be. So thank you guys so, so, so much for being with us today. <laughs> we really hope you love this look of Metroid Samus Returns. We really, really hope that you guys check the game out when it launches for Nintendo 3DS on September 15th. What you've been check asking for, this is it. So yeah. we hope you enjoy it. And have a great rest of your packs. Thank you guys so much. Nintendo Minute is never a minute. <laughs>